sinking and floating. That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this project file will be available. It's just kind of a cup. It's to scale. It's the right size cup. Um, ice cubes falling in and everything. This is just kind of like a demonstration. Uh, basically, uh, this will be available on Patreon as well as the other project we're going to do for the actual tutorial today. But this one's kind of cool because it's kind of got this like set up on like how to trigger things later in a dynamic system and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you've got all my settings and stuff there. This will be available to download with a nice gobo backdrop render settings, all good to go. Okay. On top of that, we're going to talk about just the simple properties that make things sink or float. And to do that, we're just going to use like a nice cube with our water settings set up with, we cover that in another video. So we're not going to worry about that too much, but we're going to talk about like how to make something float, sink, and then the best properties could do that. So the main takeaway, it's going to be kind of short because the main thing I want you to take away from this is that. When it comes to collisions with liquid and dynamic systems like using the rigid body system, which is exactly what we're going to do. So you've got your liquid and then we have a torus, which we put a rigid body on that. Now it's important that this torus, we have a couple things we have to change. For the search radius, we want it to be small if our water is small, which right now our water is actually set up to be 0.2 radius apart. So I like to try to match that or at least get it close. So the search radius is 0.25. Now, if the search radius is, you know, obviously much larger, you're going to hit a lot more water particles. Doing hitting a lot more water particles triggers more surface tension, right? It's just like diving versus belly flopping. So you're going to get more resistance. So you want the most accurate results to get the search area nice and small. Okay, on top of that, we also need to change it to triangle mesh because by default it's set to auto with auto with a torus basically treats it like a cylinder. So when it hits, it never actually wants to float through the middle. It actually just like acts like it's a cylinder with no hole. So we need to make sure we choose triangle mesh so we actually get the hole to actually interact where the water will go between, you know, the entrance of the torus basically. There we go. So that's the main thing. So those are like basic default settings when it comes to just collisions with a torus in general. But because everything is through water um, and our liquid fill system, it does interact. So here's what I found to be the most helpful is using the mass versus using density when it comes to making things sink or float. Now that is because the way the collisions work inside of the liquids is that it uses its own kind of settings. So inside of the liquid fill emitter, we go down to the properties. You see we have constraints, which is the target density, viscosity, all that stuff. This is where the density is. These don't have anything really to do with dynamic systems. These are particle to particle relationship. This isn't really a relationship too much with the outside world that much. Now, then it has the collision sampling down here. And that is where we have our uh, interaction mass friction and stickiness. Now this is all that's really going to matter when it comes to getting something to sink or float. And by default, this is set to 0.01. So if you come in here to our torus and we switch it from density, which is set to by default set to one, obviously a density of one is probably going to float on top, right? Cool. But then you'd think, okay, well, I need my density to be higher than 1400 in order to make it float, right? Because that's the density of our water. Well, no, apparently not, because it's not actually using the target density of the water. It's treating it like it's mass. So it's just easier to just use mass because it just makes more sense. So if the mass of our torus is one and our water's interaction mass is 0.01, it's going to sink and it's going to sink fast. Just slice right through that. And again, we can make this bigger and we can raise it up higher. So we get an even bigger splash. Bam. Big splash. Very nice. Okay. Now, if we want, what we could do is you can either balance it out two ways. You can either take the mass of your torus and lower it down or go to the mass of your water and raise it up. But let's say by default, you know, that it's set to 0.01 for the interaction mass. So if we want our torus to float, it needs to be below 0.01, so 0 0.005. Now it should, shouldn't like stink down like a rock through it, right? It should like somewhat sink. It's gonna float on top and then be like, oh, I think I'm actually going to fall in. It's kind of a really satisfying effect, like something landing on the water and then sinking. It's really cool. I like that. 
So that is when the mass is exactly half of the mass of the water. So if we go even less, like 0 0.0025, it should float altogether. I don't know if you can hear my children screaming in the background, but they, they're apparently not having a, a good time with the sitter right now. I'm sure it's not her fault. <laughs> there we go. So now we have this nice kind of pool floaty right on top, and that is because our mass is set to one fourth of the mass of our water, which means that about one fourth of our object is getting submerged in the water and the rest of it is floating, which is nice. So crank it up to 50. And now obviously that's going to slam through and pretty much just blast out all this water with such a crazy impact. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't break through the floor. But yeah, that's basically it. I mean, you know, obviously this is like a nice beach ball. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now we can take this and because it doesn't work like the real life, just because the scale of it got smaller and the mass stayed the same, it doesn't really make it more dense. It's still just based on the mass. So if you want a smaller sphere to go through, we need to like, you know, give it a good mass to make it actually more dense. And so now it's going to come in like a bullet and go, bam. That's kind of cool. I like that. We can maybe go slower. I look cool. Very cool. Nice. But yeah, hopefully that kind of helps explain, you know, that's just the settings you need to look for when you're setting up something that you want to float or sink. It's all just related to the collision interaction mass. Now we can crank up the friction and stickiness on this as well, and this will affect it. So when it comes in, it's going to go and like and stick to the ball. I feel like you could do some like ballistics gel looking stuff like that. And that's slapping through with the, with, you know, it's 2.0, 2, 2.5, sure. Yeah. No, it's just going to sit on top. And maybe eventually it will sink. Let's see. Yep. Cool. There it goes. It's just going to kind of sit there. And that friction is going to help it kind of just hang out there. So yeah, a combination of those things. Basically, all of these settings here are going to be what's more important than these settings here. These are going to control the way the particles act and how it looks. These are going to actually control how it interacts with dynamic objects. So if you found that helpful and you want to check out the project file for both this and my water ice uh, simulation that I have here where I drop the ice into the glass, check that out. It's all on the Patreon as well as a bunch of other things, uh, some open PBR materials, um, different cloth files, project files, studio setups. Uh, there's more studio setups coming with gobos and things like that as well. But yeah, check it out and support me. Let me keep making free content. But yeah, uh, if you like that, leave a like and thanks for watching. See you next time.